I don't know if I ever want to look at another granny square. I'm now home from Walmart. I've just made so many of them at this point. I've been working on this for weeks. Also, another thing to take note is that I completely don't know what I'm doing. Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to my YouTube channel, or welcome back. You guys are probably new, though, because uh, this is my first video back on YouTube. So, welcome. I'm going to cut right to it because there is a lot of footage that I have that I've already filmed and I'm still not even done with this project. But the project in question is the Skull Granny Square Pants that were trending, I believe, last year on TikTok. I've made a couple of these squares. They kind of match my crocheted top right now. But I'm probably going to have to go get more yarn, so we'll have a Walmart trip in this video. I'm going to show you guys how I made these squares. And I'm going to leave the pattern that I use, like the photo pattern that I use down below. Or you can also look up people on YouTube that have now done it. If you guys are interested, I will briefly talk about how I made these. Um, but if you really want to know, you can look down in the description. But yeah, today I'm going to be attempting as a plus size girl to make these pants. But if you guys are new here and you like crocheting, vlogs, just really type of anything, like, subscribe, comment down below. You guys know all of the stuff. Um, and welcome to my channel. We're going to go ahead and get started with this video. Hopefully... By the end of this video, I'll have a really cool pair of Skull Granny Square pants. All right, so hopping right on into it, I'm gonna show you guys really quickly the Skull Granny Square portion. So what I'm doing right here is I just did a slip stitch and I'm chaining up 14. So that way we're gonna work on both eyeballs, starting with the first one, slip stitch our way back through the first chain, which is a little tricky. I'm not used to working with a 3.75 millimeter hook but I just had to try the best I could. Then going on and doing another 14 chains, I did basically the same thing, just repeating it. So we have two eyes for the skull. Going back in on that same slip stitch again and putting it through. Once you're done with the chains, what you're gonna do is you're gonna work 18 single crochets evenly around the first loop. You're not gonna wanna go into the chain itself. You're gonna wanna go and work around it. So that way it creates like an even curve to look like the skull's eye. Once you get back up to the top here, you're going to do the same thing again, doing 18 single crochets into the other side. And then what you're going to do, once you've done that, you're going to be in the middle, but you're going to do seven slip stitches going across the top up here, which will then bring you, instead of being in the middle of your project, you're going to be on the side, so that way you can work in normal rows to make the top head portion of the skull head. You'll chain one and turn your work, and then you're going to do 14 single crochets going up across this row right here, which is basically just going into the seven slip stitches you made and then going and doing seven in the top of the 18 single crochets that you made in the previous row. When it's done, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna wanna turn your work, but you're not going to chain. You're gonna skip the first single crochet that you made and you're gonna go and make 12 single crochets going across, which means you're going to not put a single crochet in the first one and not in the second one. This is going to be repeated for a total of three rows where you're going to have 12 single crochets on this row. It's going to look like this and then you're going to turn your work again. This time you're going to do the same thing in the last row, but then you're going to end up being left with only 10 single crochets because 10 minus 2 equals 10. Um, but once you get done with that, it's going to start creating this effect going in, making sure you're not putting it into the last one and making sure you have 10 in total. Then. I realized I made a little bit of a mistake, so I had to go back and do it all over again because I didn't have the count right, and I forgot to not go into the first single crochet, so therefore I had to go back and redo it. But then it will look something like that. You'll turn, remembering not to chain, going across and doing the eight single crochets going across the top of it, and that will be the last one of the decreasing that you do for it. All you will do this next one, you're going to actually chain on this one, and you are not going to skip. You're just gonna go completely across the eight single crochets so that it helps doubles them up. And it will give you a shape that looks a little like this. Then you're just gonna chain and cut off your yarn. Um, in the pattern, it shows to keep a long one to weave in later. I'm not gonna do that. I just decided to do my own thing. So I'm gonna go ahead, flip it around, do a slip knot. And what we're gonna do is start working on the bottom. This is gonna be the like nose and the skull portion. So I connected my yarn doing a slip stitch type thing. I'm not really sure exactly what it is. This is just what I do. 
Um, and then what I did is I went in doing four single crochets, chaining up four, and then going in to the sixth stitch, sometimes with the seventh stitch, it just, you guys can look at the pattern if you really want to know. Um, I did four single crochets, chained one, and then working on this row, I just did a set of three, four clusters. So I went into the four single crochets from the last row. I went around the chain from the last one, putting four single crochets in that as well. And then going around and doing the four single crochets on the other side. So in total, what you're going to do is you're going to have 12 single crochets, but they're in sets of four. Then on this one, what you're going to want to do is you're going to skip one. You're going to slip stitch into two. Then on the next one, you will chain four. And instead of doing the treble crochets, I did double crochet because at the time when I first started, I didn't know what a treble crochet was. So I just did five double crochets. You can follow the pattern if you want, but I just did five double crochets. That will leave you with three stitches unworked. You will chain your work and then you're going to go across all of them and you're going to do six single crochets going across. And then doing the border, I chained one. And instead of doing it like the pattern, I just did this. I just stayed where I was, chained one did the same thing I was supposed to where I just did single crochets all the way around. I would look more down in the description um, where I'm going to link the pattern and the person who actually made this pattern because they explain it way better than I do on how to make it. But basically all I did was try to go around and just evenly disperse single crochets. I didn't count them or anything. But once it's done, it's going to look like this. And then I had to make a bunch and bunch and a whole lot of them. They really started to add up. In total, I made 36 of them, and this was just some of them that I had made over the course of a couple days. There were so many more that I had to make. Went in, weaved in all my ends, so now they look all nice, and those ends were not fun to weave in, let me tell you. It was not a fun time, but I recommend doing it as you go along, so that way you don't have to do it at the end. And this was just a couple of them. One eternity later. So I know I look crazy. That is correct. But I wanted to give you guys an update on these granny squares. I just finished hopefully all of the other ones that I will need. Plus all the other ones that I made. Because first I was just going and making each square at a time. Like it was taking forever. So I just decided to make a bunch of skulls. And now I'm going to work on the borders of them. Hopefully that works out. We'll see. After I make all of these I will have 36 in total. Which is how many that I see the average person making. I've watched a couple other people's videos, a couple TikToks, and seen some that will be enough, but it probably won't. Um, and if it's not, I'm gonna have to go get more yarn because I don't really have any more white yarn to use. All I'm trying to say is that there's progress that's been made. Are you sure about that? But I'm so tired of making these little skulls. I am so tired of making these little skulls. I feel like that they are gonna haunt me in my sleep because I've just made so many of them at this point. We'll see what happens. I still don't know how many I need. I've been working on this for weeks and I don't know how many I need. And I've come to the conclusion that I wanna get this video up by August 1st. Will that happen? I don't know, but that is the start of spooky season. So therefore, if I come out with this video, it should come out then. I also need sleep. I really need sleep. It is like 7 in the morning almost. I should have properly stopped at some point and went to bed. No shit! I also don't think I'm going to have enough black yarn for this project, which is really bad. All I have left is this much yarn. And I have to make all of those squares. I'm probably going to have to go get more yarn. And I don't like having to go in Walmart. I should have just placed an online order. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Or it'd be fun to go pick up the yarn and film it. Right now what I'm going to do though is get some sleep. Because I've been working on making those granny squares all night. And I made, I think about like maybe five in a row back to back. But I've gotten faster at it. When I first started, it took about probably 30 to 40 minutes just to make one of these got them down to anywhere from 13 to 18 minutes and I know this because I timed myself I still don't know if I ever want to make another one again for a very long time but regardless now is the point where I'm gonna have to make all of the border honestly that's the fun part and it doesn't I mean it probably takes longer because I've made three rounds of it I might end up going back around and making four rounds that will help add 
to it. We will see what happens. Later that same evening. All right, so starting now on the actual granny square part so that it can actually be sewed together, I'm gonna go ahead and do basically the same thing that's also in the pattern linked down below. But anybody that knows how to do a granny square will know what I'm doing. All I'm doing is I'm attaching the yarn by doing the same slip stitch type method that I did before, chaining it two so that way it's going to act as a half double crochet so that you don't have to actually do one. Um, and then these was kind of tricky to get them in there because I wanted to weave in my end with the chain. Then I chained an additional six so you'll have eight in total. Go into the top square and I do a half double crochet, chain another six, and then I'm going to do a double crochet into the next two instead of doing a half double crochet. You guys can look down below and if you scroll down through the pattern, you're going to see like a map layout that she has left for you to know exactly how to do it. I basically just overlooked the picture and went from there because it's fairly simple and six more chains and you'll slip stitch into the top. What you're doing is you're basically creating a round circle so that way it will be able to go dispersely evenly when you go and do the granny square stitches. So once you get to this part, you're going to do your clusters of double crochets to make your granny square. I did a slip stitch, three chains, then I did two double crochets to make that a cluster of technically three double crochets if you're counting that chain three. In this pattern, you do chain one in between each one, so I did that. Did a cluster of three double crochets once that was done chained another one then we were working into the corner so for this pattern the corner said to do three double crochets then you're going to chain three in your corner and do another cluster of the three double crochets and it's just basically repeating this again the pattern down below explains it a lot better than i could but if you understand how to make a granny square eventually you'll get the hang of it it's a very simple concept then i just repeated it for the next two creating three rows in total just chained one and cut off my yarn and then I would have to go in later on and weave in all these ends but this is what it looks like when it's finally done then I had to go in the process of making many 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 more of these squares equaling to a total of obviously 36. All right so out of that yarn that I had I made two squares finish them I have to weave in the ends and then I started on this one obviously it's not complete but I did some searching and I did find one more skein of the yarn that I was using from Walmart and I even found another white if I need it. I don't think I will but it's good to have on hand but I only have this skein left. I still have all of these skulls left. This will be 36 so I might even have to make more. This is not going to be enough yarn to make all of these plus maybe make more. So regardless we are going to have to go get some more of this yarn so now we're going to head to Walmart and go get more yarn. So I did get to take my trip to Walmart and get my yarn, but something happened. All they have is just that one. That's mean. That's rude. So I was able to get that one yarn. And I mean, I was kind of upset about the fact because it's normally $2.98. So I had to get a different brand. They did have white yarn though. So I decided to stock up on some of the white yarn. Because you never know when you're going to need white yarn for your project. Which actually my next video is going to have white yarn. So it's a good thing I stocked up on this. I browsed around the section because of course how could I not I really was trying to stay directly just to this particular project and I did need more black yarn so I went with the red heart super saver <laughs> then when I was browsing the yarn I looked over and I saw that they had Halloween fake flowers these are so cute they had eyeballs they had pumpkins I loved those purple ones so much then as I browsed more I saw orange ones that had pumpkins so cute then we went and checked out and I was so proud that I stayed exactly with just the colors that I needed so my boyfriend scanned them for me so I could get this lovely footage to show you guys and the total actually only came out to $17 and then we went home later just like that i'm now home from walmart it has been a little bit because there was a crazy storm i think my boyfriend filmed a little bit of it while i was driving home it was pouring down rain we decided to be a national warning go out that there was 80 mile per hour winds which i think it was being a little dramatic but it was not fun and I went to the depths to get this yarn, but I'm a little bit upset because I did good. I only got four skeins of yarn. I got two more of the white. I don't know if I'm gonna need this, but I am working on a Taylor Swift cardigan, so I'm gonna need more of the white yarn. 
that I was using to make the skulls. So now I have that. The thing that I'm upset about, which I showed you guys already, is they did not have the black yarn that I needed in the amount that I needed it. I got the one skein that they had, which was only $2.98, which this is not a big thing of yarn, but for $3, this is a really good price. It's not the best quality, but it is what I think I was using for the other one, so I wanted to keep it even. But they didn't have a lot of it left, so I did have to splurge and buy a Red Heart Super Saver. I showed it in the video. It was like $8. I'm not sure how much it was. I'd have to end up buying this one because I need to have more yarn, and if I don't have more black yarn, then I can't finish making this project and I still have a decent amount to go. I'm gonna use this yarn and then I'm gonna come back to you guys when I'm ready to lay them all out and figure out just how many squares I actually need because at the point right now I'm making 36, which is what everyone else was making. So once I'm finished making all of those, I'm gonna come back, share with you me laying them all out on a pair of pants because I think that's gonna be the easiest way um, and then figure out if I need more, sewing them together and then we'll have the finished product. Eventually. Alright, so this is the current outline for the pants. I still have a bunch of squares left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this for the other side. And then I'm going to measure the width of my leg around it, its biggest part, so like my thighs, to figure out how many need to actually go around. And then hopefully we're going to have enough of these. I laid them all out. So these ones are like doubled. So I know exactly how many I'm going to need for the front and the back. I took a picture and tried to map out everything. But the problem is, is that I am not going to have enough to go on this because I need three to go around for each pant. This is editing Haley popping in to tell you that that actually did not happen. So just scratch all that out. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I think I was going to slip stitch them, but that's going to take way too long. Yeah, so I said it took too long. I actually did end up going and doing slip stitches and work them around and try them on, see how it works and just add row by row to see if I actually do need more than this initial 36. Okay, so instead of making this more confusing, editing Haley is coming in to share with you guys exactly what I did do. So this was my rough draft that I had. It was a little crazy, but I'm going to try my best to explain it. I started by doing the seven squares for the first two rows. I wish now going back, I would have only done one, but right here in the box, you will see I did two rows of me doing seven granny squares. This is how I actually assembled my granny squares. I took two squares, faced them so that the outside that you would actually see, they're both going to be facing inwards, sandwiching them together so that the inside of the pant leg is out. And what you're going to do is go in on this seam and you're going to, what I did was slip stitch with a hook. So on the inside of the pant leg, you will have the seam that you can see, but when you are wearing them, they will face this way. So you can't see the seam at all and it's really seamless and it actually looks really nice. So I kept on doing that for the whole first row. This is seven of them together, which just actually was a little too big for me. But for the sake of this video, I did that twice so i have two rows both are with seven granny squares for each row and so then i started working on the pant legs separately which this was the most trickiest part also another thing to take note is that i completely don't know what i'm doing and it is the night before august 1st which is when i'm supposed to get this video up. Well, hopefully i can get this done in time but we'll see what happens then it was time to work around on the part of the legs, starting with five granny squares around for each one. I did three granny squares for the last two rows, and then I did a single crochet ending off on the pants. But as I said, this particular section in the middle was very, very hard to do. I had a little change of scenery because I was working into the way hours in the morning. I was watching Nightmare Before Christmas, which is one of my favorite movies. Let me know down below what your favorite movies are to watch during the spooky season but I just casually kept working. I was watching a bunch of movies while working on this. Eventually got down to the last final square at the bottom and I was so proud and so accomplished that I had actually made these pants. are 
back right where we started. I decided to film the intro at the same time as filming the outro just because it'd be a lot easier for the video's sake. Comment down below any crochet ideas or video ideas that you guys would like for me to do in the future. Since this is my first video, I want to see what everybody wants to see and see who sees this video. These pants took so long to make. With that being said, I'm not going to keep you guys too much longer. This video is probably already very long as it is. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. And with that being said, I will see you all in my next video.